Good morning to you from St. Peter's Church, Carlton Colville. There's nothing nicer than just sitting on a bench and enjoying the morning sun, knowing that some hours before you've been through a really difficult time and you're wondering how you're going to get through it. Well, that was how it was for us on the Saturday night. I'll share a little bit with you. Um, I'll pan the camera around. And you can see where I am. It is a lovely spot. And the usual graveyard, of course. And this morning I thought I'd read you a scripture. And particularly pertinent to, as I said, what had happened on Saturday night. So we went out with our friend Paul's car. Paul, uh, at the moment, as many of you know, um, is a friend of mine who's laid up with a stroke at the moment. And um, he has uh, enjoyed the privilege of two sports cars in his life. And they're, they're two MGs, two British MGs, those of you that are in America. You perhaps might know them. And um, one of them's laid up at the moment with uh, some serious mechanical problems. And the other one's been on the road. And uh, my friend Paul and I have been big mates for about 30 years now. And uh, he gives me the use of the car when uh, he isn't available. And... Uh, we were out on Saturday night with the car and uh, unsuspectingly we didn't know that there was a serious problem with the, uh, with the motor and we were going along the road, came to a stop at a roundabout and suddenly we heard a crashing noise and uh, the car just came to a stop and huge clouds of smoke appeared and uh, well you're in the middle of uh, nowhere and uh, darkness has descended it's now half past ten at night and what are you going to do well one says yes you call the breakdown service don't you well that's uh, one of the first things one should do of course well, we were very fortunate too to be blessed with uh, a couple of gentlemen that stopped behind us one of them turned out to be an engineer and uh, he knew about mg cars and he had a look at the car quickly and uh, you could see immediately that the uh, head gasket had gone. Those of you that are mechanical will know that once a car's head gasket goes, there's not much you can do for it. Uh, my friend did have some water in the back of his car, some uh, large bottles of, of, I think there were two litre bottles of water, plus a near full can of oil. So we thought possibly we might be able to get the car going and just be able to get it home. So we put the water and the oil in, but of course, as soon as we started the car up, everything just fell out the bottom. So we realized that the car wasn't going to be going anywhere. But the, uh, the gentleman was very kind uh, who stayed with us, and uh, he actually said, well, we phoned the uh, recovery company and he'll stick with us until they arrive which was rather, rather a nice experience, uh, especially for my wife, who's a French speaker, but he turned out to also be a French speaker. So uh, that would sort of keep us occupied for a time. So eventually we, we call the emergency services, as I say, and uh, those of you that are living in the UK at the moment and uh, call the uh, Automobile Association, or the AA as it's known, might have had the experience of waiting a very long time for them to arrive. And this is what happened to us. The first hour went by, the second hour went by, coming into the third hour. And eventually a van turns up. Now, I was expecting a recovery truck. The chap in the van gets out, obviously a mechanic, looks at the car. Oh yes, head gasket's gone. I said, well, why have you come in a van and not a recovery truck? So uh, he says, well, I'm, uh, that's what I was told to do. I said, well, can you phone the AA? Because um, these, are, uh, these particular people actually were not AA. They're, they're kind of contracted in once I think it gets to a certain time at night. So he phones up and he finds out that uh, I'm not actually covered to be picked up. And I was under the impression that I was. So, uh, shock horror, there we are in the middle of nowhere, realising that our car, or our friend's car, wasn't going to go anywhere. So, um, we uh, 
were told very nicely by the AA that if we wanted to be picked up, we would have to pay a further £100, plus £4.50 a mile, to eventually get us home, which would, of course, would have run into hundreds of pounds, as we were quite a distance away. We realised that wasn't an option. So uh, we had to call a taxi, which uh, was not too cheap either, which got us home eventually. And um, the car, of course, had to be left behind on the road. Well, the upshot of the story is that uh, we were able to get the car the next day and um, a recovery truck picked it up at a reasonable fee, brought the car back to our house. Of course, it's going to need hundreds of pounds worth of repair, but um, at the moment, our friend, uh, when I told him about it, I must say I was reluctant, uh, he still laid up with the stroke. He said, well, that's the least of my problems. So um, the point was, and the point of the reason of me telling you this story is that we need to be properly prepared for eventualities. And uh, we know all about that in the Bible, about being prepared for eventualities, things that can occur. And uh, I want to share a verse with you out of Matthew 24, and it's verse 45. And it's this. Who then is the faithful and sensible slave whom his master put in charge of his household of slaves to give them their food at the proper time. And uh, I thought about this food at the proper time, having the right resource for the right situation. I didn't realize that um, my AA cover wasn't gonna actually allow us to be picked up and rescued. I hadn't paid enough money or I hadn't actually read the policy properly and realized that um, I didn't have the, the, the full package. And of course, we know all about that, don't we? And uh, the follow on from that story of the slave. And uh, it's interesting that after Matthew 24 and coming into Matthew 25, we read the uh, parable of the 10 virgins, which uh, is worth listening to again, actually. And uh, I'll start at verse 1. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. No preparation at all. <clears throat> the wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to, their, to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. And it's interesting, isn't it, that um, they had to buy their oil. But it's also important, too, that we have the right kind of oil, the right kind of food at the right time, the right kind of cover. I wasn't covered to have that car rescued. And uh, if I'd realised that, of course, I would have made sure of it that I did. Of course, in the world situation, I would have got out of there if I'd paid the right amount of money. But it's important, isn't it, that whatever we do, we do thinking about the situation before we actually get into it. And it's the same now with God's Word, with what's happening around us. How are we preparing 
No, it isn't all about just getting food and storing it away. But it's also about preparing our hearts. What's in our hearts? What's in the, uh, the way that we think about the times that we're in? Do we give them due consideration? Do we realize that at any time and at any moment, like that car, it can just come to a dead stop and you're in the middle of nowhere and there's perhaps nowhere that you can be rescued? We were thinking about it, my wife and myself, that uh, if it had been a winter's night, we probably could have froze to death out there in the middle of the highway. Cars were passing by and uh, these days you try and stick your thumb out, people just ignore you. So it's important, isn't it? The right kind of food at the right time. And being foolish also involves thinking about what we understand by the words of Jesus and what Jesus is saying to us. There are all kinds of ways that people exercise their faith. I was just leaving the house now and listening to the radio and um, a lady was talking, I think she was one of these female vicars that uh, the BBC tend to like putting on and she was talking about having a strong faith what it is to have a strong faith and uh, we can have a strong faith but is that faith a bit misplaced have we got the right cover is that faith a faith that, that has been born of false doctrines wrong ideas about Christianity are we putting our faith in idols and trinkets? Or even superstition to some extent? God is calling us at this time to make sure that we have the right mix, that we have the right ingredients for our faith, and that uh, we have the right cover if we go out, make sure that we're responsible for ourselves. And, as we know, we're also responsible for others, especially uh, if we have families and children to care for. So at this time, let's remember that. I would also ask that you continue to lift up uh, us in prayer with um, my ankle, which is still on the swollen side, still uh, wondering what's going to happen with it. And uh, our friend Paul is still in hospital with a stroke. And I know many of you have many needs. And uh, I see that all the time. We all want our needs met, don't we? We all want to be in a, a quiet place, sitting and looking backwards at the storm instead of forwards to the storm. But we know we are going to be facing a lot as the days get on. But... Um, our Lord will be with us. He will strengthen us and make sure that he will come through. And there will be that quiet place at the end when everything will be history and we'll look back and say, thank you, Lord, for what you've done in my life. <clears throat> Have a blessed Sunday morning.